In this clip, we demonstrate various options for opening and updating a purchase order in priority. The order can be based on a variety of other documents, such as a sales order, a purchase requisition, a vendor price quotation, a blanket purchase order. In this clip, we'll be demonstrating recording a purchase order that is not based on any reference document. In the purchase order form, you can check the expected inventory balance for the part, check the availability of the part for sale, and define workflows for purchase authorizations. We'll also demonstrate how to link the purchase to a budget item, and how to update due dates for parts once the order has been authorized. Before you open an order, there are a number of setups that will facilitate your work later on. First, as purchase orders are open for a specific vendor, it is helpful to assign each part a preferred vendor. When purchase orders are opened automatically, they are often open for the preferred vendor. So, let's go to the inventory parts catalog menu and open the parts catalog form, where you can define a preferred vendor for each part. You can also create a list of vendor parts in the Vendor Parts form. Let's go to the Purchasing Vendors menu and look at the form. Now let's go to the Purchase Orders menu and to Purchase Order Maintenance. Printouts of purchase orders can include remarks. For instance, you may want to include a note requesting confirmation that your order was received. Using the Set Text for Purchase Orders form, you can record set text that will appear in the remarks of all purchase orders. Or you can use the Types of Purchase Orders form to classify types of purchase orders and define set text per type in the sub-level form. You can define the authorization process for purchase orders in one of two ways, through workflow management or authorizer lists. In this demonstration, we'll be using the default authorizer list. In the current menu, open the authorizer list for purchase order form and move to code 00, which serves as the default. Let's define authorization as follows. Barbara, the regional manager, needs to authorize purchase orders up to $10,000. Purchases in excess of $10,000 require the authorization of Rose, Vice President. The definitions recorded for this authorizer list will be applied to all purchase orders with the 00 list code. You can also create additional authorizer lists, for example, for other departments in the company. Now let's start by recording a purchase order manually. In the Purchase Orders menu, open the Purchase Orders form and choose the desired vendor. Once you leave the field, the vendor name, date and order number are filled in automatically. The contact is filled in with the name of the person defined as the vendor's purchase order contact. If necessary, it can be revised. Click the Price tab. This is where the price of the order will be displayed once it has been itemised and all parts are priced. Right now, these columns are empty. As the vendor is offered a 10% discount for all ordered items, record an overall discount percentage of 10. Now click the Payment Info tab. The tax code and payment terms have been filled in automatically if they were defined in the financial parameters for vendors form for this vendor, but can be modified. In the current case, all parts are being ordered to a specific company warehouse, so click the References tab and select the receiving warehouse. As a result, the shipping address sublevel is filled in automatically with the address of the warehouse, although this can be revised. This address will appear on the printed order instead of the main company address. Note that in this tab you can link the purchase order to existing documents, a purchase demand, a vendor price quote, a blanket order or a sales order, if the ordered goods are intended to fulfill a customer order. In the type of order column, assign the order the appropriate type, for example, office equipment. You are now ready to itemise the order. Let's enter the order item sublevel form. Because we are recording the order manually, the form is blank. 
press F6 in the part number column to display a search list of parts. Since a vendor part list has been created, only parts recorded for this vendor appear. Select the ordered part. Note that you can press Ctrl F6 if you want to view the entire list of parts in the system. After recording the part number, indicate the desired due date. Before recording the ordered quantity, you can check inventory for the part using the Part Availability and Inventory for Part sublevel forms. The Part Availability form makes it easy to calculate exactly how much inventory you need to order by displaying the available inventory as well as inventory on order and current sales orders. The projected inventory column summarizes all of the inventory transactions. The inventory for part form displays part balances per warehouse. Now record the quantity of the ordered part. The unit price is filled in automatically. When the purchase order is prepared manually, the source of the price is the vendor price list or the price listed for the part in the part catalog form. The price source column indicates the source of the price used. You can check prices by entering the latest part purchases from vendor sublevel, where you can see the latest invoices from this vendor in which the part appears, useful for comparison of prices and quantities. In the vendor price quotations per part sublevel, you can compare price quotes received from this vendor for the part. If you have a standing discount from the vendor for this part recorded in the vendor price list, this will appear automatically. You can also specify a part discount percentage manually. The extended price column displays the total part price less the part discount. In the dual currency package, the price including VAT column displays the extended price plus VAT. Finally, you can assign a budget item to the part being purchased. This budget item will roll over into later purchase documents when the part is received from the vendor, when it is billed and when it is paid for. Because budget items are traced throughout the chain of purchasing transactions, you can accurately compare budget appropriations with actual expenses or income at any point in the purchasing process. That is, you can view not only billed transactions, but also unbilled transactions, open orders, and open PRs. Note that there is a financial constant called budget order period which determines how the system will calculate budget utilization when the purchase order due date falls in the next budget year or when the order was opened in the previous budget year. The default is for the current budget to take into account all open orders due by the end of the year but ignore orders due next year. If you wish to record a remark that is pertinent to this particular part you can use the order item's remarks sublevel form. Repeat all of the above for each ordered part, moving down to an empty row for each one. Now let's open the parallel sublevel form, purchase orders, remarks. Since we have assigned a type of order for which set text has been defined, the remarks have been recorded automatically. They can be revised as necessary. If you want to attach any files to the order, such as a price list file received from the vendor, you can do so by using the attachments sublevel. Let's return to the upper level form and select the authorization and follow up tab. As mentioned earlier, you can define the authorization process via workflow management or authorizer lists. To define workflow rules for the authorization process, run the BPM flowchart purchase orders program by direct activation. In this example, we'll use the default 00 authorizer list instead. This list appears automatically in the authorizer list code column, but can be revised. Consequently, the definitions we recorded earlier for this authorizer list will be applied to the current purchase order. Now we'll change the status of the order to a status that can be authorized. When an order receives this status, an automatic email alert is sent to the first authorizer. Once it is authorized by the first authorizer, an automatic email alert is sent to the next authorizer if necessary, and so on, until the order is fully approved. Once the order is approved, you can print it and or send it to the relevant vendor via fax or email. In the list of direct activations, select Print Purchase Order and then choose any of the provided Print Send options. The authorization process is meant to ensure the proper management of the purchase process. 
Once this process has begun, the order cannot be revised. Still, it's possible that after sending the order out, the vendor indicates that only a portion of it can be delivered immediately and that the balance will not be available for several months. In this case, you will want to update the expected due dates and quantities so that the order reflects realistic expectations for the receipt of inventory. Let's open the revisions for authorised orders form and retrieve an order that has already been authorised. In the order item sublevel, move to the item that needs to be revised. Let's suppose that 30 units will be supplied on the date indicated in the purchase order, but 20 units won't be delivered until the end of next month. From the list of direct activations, select split purchase order items. In the quantity new item column, record the amount that will be delivered on the later date. In the due date column, record the date delivery is expected. When you exit the order item sublevel, the new line is added. You can return to the order items form to view the revision. Once a purchase order has been authorised and sent to the vendor, you can continue to use the purchase orders form and its sublevels to follow up on the order. A purchase order is automatically closed when the receipt of the ordered parts is recorded in the goods receiving voucher or a vendor invoice. Consequently, the balance of each order item is updated automatically and line items that have been delivered in their entirety are flagged as closed. In the order tracing sublevel form, you can see all inventory transactions for the current part as well as the number of the documents associated with the transaction. You can also view full document details. When all items in the purchase order have been delivered, it will be flagged as closed in the authorization and follow-up tab. Additionally, a number of useful reports about purchase orders are available from the Purchase Order Reports menu. For example, you can track the procurement of parts or check all the open orders to a particular vendor. You can also run a report that lists all supply delays from a given vendor. This report displays any open order item that is overdue for delivery, together with the balance of the part to be received and the number of days by which it is late. The system also offers several tools for purchase order analysis, including a report generator for designing customised purchase order reports and a BI report that can be used to analyse purchase orders by quantity and price in various cross-sections. This concludes our demonstration of recording a purchase order in priority. For more information you can read the Purchase Order Wizard, which opens from the Purchase Order Wizards menu.